Welcome to this week's prayer devotion. I'm Judy Billings, and I want to invite you to go to fwgoodshepherd.org, click on hashtag Be the Church, and that's where you'll find previously recorded sermons and other devotions. Well, those of us who are older can look back and see that many things change over time. And even those who are younger know that change is the norm. Some things we expect to change and others we have thought would never change. Sometimes change, change happens faster than we could ever imagine. Let me give you an example of dramatic change that I didn't realize happened in less than a normal lifetime. It was only 66 years between the time that the first two men flew in the air and the first time an American stepped on the moon. In 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright made the first successful flight in history in a self-propelled, heavier-than-air aircraft. They stayed aloft for 12 seconds and covered 120 feet on its inaugural flight. Fast forward only 66 years later, in 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first human to step on the moon. Not only that, he and Buzz Aldrin walked around the moon for three hours. All this was accomplished in the span of 66 years. So change is all around us and change is the norm. The changes we have seen lately have shaken our foundation and that of our country. During this pandemic, we have taken a hard look at our national sins. And it was time and it was due. And we don't like what we see. The hard things that have happened during the past year have left us distressed, depressed, and devastated. Some of us are still stuck in our sins. At this point in my devotion, I had to stop and take a look at what I had written. I was ready to condemn others. But I decided to look to see what Scripture has to teach me. I quote from Psalms 14 that's also repeated in Romans 3. Psalms 14, 2 and 3 reads this way. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned away. All have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. And if that wasn't condemning enough in Romans 3, verse 23, it says this, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Scripture says all. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. So we each have to look at our own sin. Have the happenings around us or around me taken my eyes off of God and his will for my life? Do I worship political news and racial or social actions and events instead of looking at what God's word has to say about my own actions? Do I spend as much time with God in conversation? Don't take me wrong here. We need to stay aware of what is happening around us. We can't hide our faces in the Bible. I don't mean that. 
But I believe God has something to tell us about what we do, what we see and hear, and we can't just point fingers. When we go through troubled times, we search ourselves and search for something stable. My search always goes to prayer and the support of scripture. We want prayer to change things, but we don't want prayer to ever change. And scripture tells us that it will never change. These are three things I count on with prayer. God hears our prayers and always answers. Prayers have power because of the power of God that is unleashed with our prayers. And we can count on God and his faithfulness. Those are the things that I count on. With prayer in mind, let's look at some scripture that contains promises concerning prayer. God always hears and God always answers. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 read this way. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. This is the confidence we claim through scripture. God always hears and always answers. Prayer may not change the situation quickly or change things in the way we want, but God always answers with his perfect will. God is powerful for us. In David's prayer of praise in 1 Chronicles 29, 11 through 13, he tells of God's power and gives thanks. It reads this way. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over it. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give thanks and praise your glorious name. That's a beautiful scripture. David knew God well. It is said that David was a man after God's own heart. David went through many troubled times that reflect what is happening in our world today. David knew from experience about the power of God. And if we're honest, most of us do too. The third thing that will never change in, about God is his faithfulness. Isaiah 54.10 reads this way. For the mountains may move and the hills disappear, but even then my faithful love for you will remain. My covenant of blessing will never be broken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. These are God's own words to us. Our covenant of blessing will never be broken. And two favorite epistles often also confirm God's love and faithfulness. You'll find both of them very familiar. Romans 8:28. All things work together for good for those who love God. And John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. 
Prayer is always productive. God always answers with his perfect will. And with his power, his love and faithfulness. Praise God. Prayer endures even when change is all around us and devastation is happening to us and our friends and our neighbors. Prayer endures because God is faithful to those who love him. Let's go to God in prayer where we can call on God and he will lead us and he will answer and act following his perfect will. I will leave a few moments in the midst of our prayer today for you to lift up your special prayers. Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we turn once again to join our hearts and voices our longings and our anguish to reach out to you in sacred prayer. It is with you within the place called prayer that we find peace and even joy during times of trial. You are peace. You are hope. And you are our God and Savior. We stand at the door and knock, for we are grateful, thankful, lost, and devastated, all combined into one feeling that has no name. Our nation has disappeared. Our sacred places have been torn down, and we repeat the heartbreak expressed in our scripture. We have lost respect for each other. We have lost respect for the things you have made. And there is an absence of the love and kindness our hearts require. We have been living in denial. In secret, we have hidden our lusts and manipulated our motives. In losing respect for each other, we have ignored truth and forsaken wisdom. The only truth we know, O oh God, comes from your word and lives in the body of Christ. We have reached bottom. We point fingers and blame each other. There's no one left who is untouched. Forgive us our trespasses. We love you and need to hear your voice say the words spoken to us in the past. You are forgiven. Your word tells us in 2 Chronicles 7.14 that if we, the people of God, will humble ourselves and pray and seek your face, and turn from our wicked ways. You, O oh gracious God, will hear from heaven, forgive our sins, and heal our land. Lord, we have loved ones who are hurting, and there are many we do not even know who suffer in countless ways. We bring before you now people and situations in our world and ask your blessing upon each one. Lord, hear our prayers for each other and our world. We will feast on your word and open our hearts to your love, Lord. We see better times, gentler times, 
and your promises of hope in our future. We call upon the power of prayer, and yet we know the power in prayer is not in the prayer. The power of prayer rests with you, the giver of peace. Lord, we dutifully wait in obedience for your perfect timing. We ask all of this in the holy name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Prayer never changes, but it can change us. God's love is new every morning, and it is powerful. God answers our prayers with his perfect will. Praise God. Join me again next week for another prayer devotion.